Clinton sat for me as his last official portrait as president. They said to me, now Platon, we want a nice dignified headshot. We don't want one of those weird wide angle <laughs> numbers that you do. So I said to him, Mr. President, will you show me the love? And everyone in the room went dead silent. All his advisors, one of his advisors actually said, Mr. President, whatever you do, don't show him the love. So he said, shut up, shut up. I know what he means. Two months later, I forgot about it, and Larry King comes on and he holds up my picture and he says, tonight we're talking about this. This is disgusting. It's all the photographer. He planned everything. The hands are big so he can feel you up. The legs are spread to present you with his manhood. And he said he's smiling, saying, I got away with it. And the tie, the tie is an arrow. <laughs> I said to my wife, there goes my green card application. <laughs> I've had the rare opportunity to meet many amazing photographers who move through their different landscapes to create powerful images. I'm always inspired by how these images transform the way we see people and understand the world. A great photograph needs no explanation, but on capture, these incredible people tell the story of creating their most memorable images. I'm Mark Seliger, and this is Capture. Hi, I'm Mark Seliger, and uh, we are sitting in my studio in New York City. I'm delighted to be sitting with the great Platon and Dylan McDormand. You don't mind if we refer to you as a photographer, do you? <laughs> I don't know if Easy. I, quali if I qualify. Of course you qualify. For me, you know, my angle is probably different from your guys. I always search for people who feel like me. When I look at a photograph, it's an experience for me. I, and I always look for this as a kid, is that I want somebody to feel what I feel, and that I can't always translate that in words, so I can do it in a picture and say, here, take a look at this, what, th what does that make you feel? When I look at this picture, Dylan, that's a scary photograph in a lot of ways. I mean, it really evokes everything that, you know, people don't like to talk about. That was a cop show that I had done, and because of my own personal history, you know, I've come from a violent past and there were guns involved in my past and I, I've always been ups, uh, interested in what a gun means because it means so much in war, in protection, in violence. The gun has become heroic, you know, the cowboy in America, the right to protect ourselves in the Constitution. There's so much around what a gun means that if you point a gun at somebody in a photograph, you, you can't help but feel something. I'm trying to translate and tell you something, as we all are, about who we are. Right. That you can live with somebody for years, and they don't have no clue who you are in the end. Mm -hmm. But a picture is, is, it lays it out there in a very concrete way. Once you've done that, it's concrete to you. It's concrete to you when you do a picture. And I'm very clear when I do a picture of what it means to me. But um, how people read that picture then is up to it's them. very interesting. Yeah, it's up to and them. And it changes a great deal. Thinking about your work, which is expansive, it goes from very personal to environmental. You really do have like this crazy range of pictures, but I, but I really love the antithetical power of, <laughs> of your subject matter. I mean, Gaddafi and Willie Nelson, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. Both those pictures, what you see is not what you get. Willie Nelson resonated with America, and I, obviously I'm an Englishman, so I'm a foreigner in these lands, but I was aware that he's an American icon. And there's this picture of, of him with his eyes closed, sort of embracing the guitar. And people thought, wow, this is the man embracing his creativity. And the reality was that uh, Willie had a little smoke or two before the shoot, and uh, he was pretty out of it. There was a moment he almost fell off his chair, so I gave he him... He was resting. I, I, he was resting. <laughs> um, and holding on to his guitar for support in many different ways. Which is also really interesting about it as a, another piece to him is that he uses the same guitar and has for many, many years. He's not like a musician that goes and you know, grabs a new it's freshly an tuned guitar. It's really his. This is a piece of Willie. So Dylan, where's your favorite place to take a picture? Africa is just a remarkable place to take a camera. Going into Congo, 
which is probably the wound of the world. I went there because my mom, Evansler, opened a safe house for women who are raped, and these women have nowhere to go. So she raised the money, and she built this incredible place in Bukavu. So I went there for the opening of this house and um, took my camera and photographed the women there. And the sorrow and the depth of pain and complete, absolute uh, bliss at the same time because there's a, an incredible happiness to them that I don't even normally see here. So I just it's almost like survival, survival yeah. really spindles this experience of, right. of life. Every single moment is a picture. I just came, I just came back from New Delhi and right. I had the exact same experience. I mean, everywhere you turn, there was like, you know, a photograph. It just kind of makes your head spin. Oh, it's God. so incredible. See life, as they say, if you want to know about life, you go to India. And um, it's true. because everything happens in a moment, you got somebody's dead here, you got another, you have a funeral happening here, you have a wedding here, you have someone whose face has been burnt off, you have children running in the streets, you, you, you know, there's no running water or electricity, and you're just like in a smell. In, in your, in, so you're just like, you're overwhelmed by life. I was brought up in the Greek islands, so um, my first proper pictures were of the villagers that I grew up with as a kid. And uh, it's been a 25-year project, and I'm still mm. adding to it. Um, but it's a place I return to. And in this village in the mountains, it doesn't change. Mm. I change. I'm getting older and more haggard, maybe more bitter with life's uh, adversity. But the place stays beautifully simple and honest, and the people seem to be the same. even though somewhere like Greece right now is in turmoil politically. For me, that's a place I return to. Mm. Amazing. And it, it's the same thing I'm searching for that you both touched upon so eloquently. At the end of the day, photography is not about photographing someone who's powerful or famous, even for us. It's about being empowered with the tools to record something that's poignant and that means something. And I feel that we're all very privileged to feel that. If we're going to be happy and content in our lives as photographers or as human beings, we have to acknowledge that there's a beautiful moment now and the universe is spinning around you right now. Around you right now. Mm -hmm. This is the magic bit. Mm -hmm. And if you're always feeling that it's better on the other side of the room, then it probably is. <laughs> Photography has to empower us to say, actually, it goes back to what this is all about. This is the moment. Do you get nervous about the confrontation? In India, because of uh, the religious stuff, you know, sometimes I felt like I was invasive. There's actually one, I don't, I don't think I showed it today, but he had, uh, his face was all burned, and he had a handkerchief on to cover his burn. He caught me when I took his picture, and I felt embarrassed um, that I had violated him somehow.